Good morning. Oh, we're glad to see you. Let's stand and let's worship the Lord together. The Lord lifts up his countenance upon us. He's gracious to us. He loves us. He is for us. He's our God. This is the day that you have made. Whatever comes, I won't complain. For all my hope is in your name. And now your joy awaits my praise. I give thanks for all you have done. And I will say of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing. Lord, I am grateful. When I was down, you brought me out, set my feet on higher ground. So here I stand, you are my God, your faithfulness, my solid rock. I give thanks to all you have done, and I will sing of your mercy and your love. Your love is unfailing, for I am grateful. I give thanks to all you have done. I won't forget all the battles you have won. ultimate battle has been won. We did this in the last service. Let's share with someone close by us a battle that God has won for us.
is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned for all his sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure the saints and shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall when men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call God's love so sure shall still endure all measureless and strong redeeming grace to Adam's race the saints and angels song oh love of God how rich and
I've been saved and heaven is my home. Oh, I can't wait for that day when I'll see you face to face. For I was made to magnify my maker. Yes, I was saved to walk beside my Savior. Because of redemption, because of the blood, is finally visible. Thank you, Lord, for things to come, for glorified bodies, for living creatures and the eternal realm, for living water, for that great change. Thank you for that day, Lord, and thank you for this eternal life of which we can grab hold to fight the good fight of faith. Thank you that you walk with us. You're our God. You promised us, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of the age. You're our God. Thank you for this pilgrimage, this time of sojourning. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Just for an introduction, turn to Jeremiah 17. What a great week we had with the play and um, the, the Easter celebration last Sunday was just a very special time. And uh, we have a water, we have a baptism this morning at the, at the end of the service uh, for new folks that have come to Christ. I want to share with you just for a few moments here from chapter 17, verse 5, 6, 7, and 8. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabit it. And then the second part of the, of the parable here, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is, he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreads out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So we have two people described here. One is what we all do. We trust in ourselves. We trust in our flesh. That's the 
term there. We trust in man, in our strength, in our intelligence, trust in our society, we trust in ourselves. And then we are compared to like a heath in the desert, just a, a common desert plant that does not bear fruit. It's just something that, like a weed, just comes up. And that's how sometimes people live their lives, like a scrubby life. But then the man that trusts in the Lord, he is like a tree planted. So we could put up verse 8 there. Okay, there it is. For he shall be as a tree planted. Now, when Jesus came, in, in, when he came into the world and he had his disciples, he, he called them. He, he ministered to them. He called them. But then, after his death, they, they were confused. They were troubled. They were worried. They were afraid. They, they, were, they scattered. And then he went to them. You know, he went to each one as a group, and then he went to Peter alone. He went to Thomas, who was doubting, and he ministered to him. And he and and when when we when we turn to God, we are like a tree planted. And you know, you can't plant yourself. God plants you. Like a tree can't plant another tree, and uh, a tree can't plant itself. It's, it's uh, intentional. A tree planted by the river of water. And I believe that when, when you trust in God, then he plants you. You are planted by God in a certain place where you have the water, you have the supply. He plants you to meet your need. He plants you to minister to you. He plants you. He does it. So when Peter denied the Lord, and, and he's in a way lost, you know, like Peter is um, discouraged, he is totally needing restoration, Jesus goes to him because he is, he is one of those that are called and he is planted by God. He is taken care of by God. He is forgiven. He is given grace. He is loved. He is cared for. So um, I want you to think that there are many lives that are just randomly being lived, and they're like heath in the desert, and they can't see when good comes, and they don't bear fruit, and they're like scrubby plants. And then there's you and I who are planted by God, and your life is cared for by God. When you are in unbelief, he can come and minister to you. When you need to be forgiven, he forgives you. When you are troubled, he gives you courage. He ministers to you his love and grace. And he speaks to you. He helps you. You are planted. Not an accident, but planted. You know, planted by God. I think I have a picture up on the screen of that, that middle picture. The middle one, I think. No, it's the next one, or the one before that, that one, yeah. You, you know, it's not an accident, and it doesn't do it by itself. It's like God plants you, and your life is special, and he saved you, and he put you, and he's going to, you say, well, I don't, I don't believe, like Thomas I don't believe in the rat. I don't believe. I, not, unless I put my hand in his side, I'm not going to believe. And, and then the Lord meets him, and then Thomas believes. Because so, he's planted. 
like God called Thomas, and God has called you. And you might say, yeah, but I'm not, I don't know about that. And it's like, well, walk by faith, and you find, and that will be our message today, today what, what God will teach you after the resurrection, after the resurrection, he went to the disciples to meet their need because they are planted by God. And, and you know, like the farmer isn't going to forget you. The farmer knows what you need, and the farmer is the one that's, and, and Jesus is the gardener. He is the Savior. He is your friend. He is the one that comes for you. He will not leave you or forsake you. He is the one that speaks to your heart and ministers to you to help you. Now, lastly, when Jesus gives you the mind and the heart, he, it drives out the poison, the toxics, the toxins, the toxic life. He drives it out. Like when you have life from God, it overcomes the atheism. It overcomes the appetites of the flesh. It overcomes your selfishness. When the life, when he, you are planted by God, then that, that planting is blessed. Look at verse 8 or 9. It says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. You, you are a blessed person because you are trusting in the Lord. How did that happen? Jesus planted you, and now you have this new nature. You are trusting in the Lord, and he drives out the stuff that other people are troubled with. I mean, we get troubled too, but, but I want you to hear me. It actually, he, he drives it out. The Holy Spirit filling us, and there is not another spirit that's in you. There is the Holy Spirit, the, the mind of God, the way of God, the faith of God, the forgiveness of God, the joy of God. That's your new life. You are planted by God, and you didn't do it yourself. God planted you. God saved you. God planted you. God is for you. God has something for us. Okay? Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Good morning, everyone. Okay, these are our announcements. Um, first of all, if this is your first time at a Greater Grace service, uh, we're excited you're here. We're just glad that you've showed up. So if you don't mind... Raising your hands so we can acknowledge you. Anyone? Welcome, 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 welcome four, welcome five, welcome six, welcome seven. Wow, awesome. If you don't mind keeping your hands raised so that we can give a visitor's packet to you, um, and that's awesome. Uh, and if you don't get a visitor's packet, please make sure after service you come to our welcome center, and we'll have a visitor's packet there for you. Okay, next Sunday evening um, is our family Life Night. Say that. Family Life Night. Okay. Come and enjoy a service dedicated to helping families. Bring your kids. Uh, there will be something for all. Okay. And that's amazing. Um, and then just uh, this is our first Sunday of the month. Uh, so we're going to have communion as the body. And um, as the ushers get ready to hand out the elements, um, let's just... Take a moment and quiet our hearts and bring anything before God um, so we can partake in communion. Okay? Amen.
It's amazing um, just to realize uh, how beautiful the body of Christ is and to see everyone come up and individual. We've said this often, but individual, but yet we are one. Um, and I was just thinking about as we, uh, this morning for communion, one verse in Luke chapter 9, verse 51. We said this in the first service, and it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem, um, unmoved, uh, fixed, planted, eternal purpose, eternal plan, in time, unwavering, because why? Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. The joy that was set before him. The joy set before him was not the cross. The joy set before him was you and I. A restored relationship. That's why he set his face like a flint. And that's amazing as we consider communion because we look back on what has been done for us as we heard from our pastor. I love that picture. Very fragile plant like us, very fragile, um, nurturing. But the one thing we could not do, we could not deliver ourselves from the power of darkness. We could not save ourselves. But Christ came and he was fixed. I love that, fixed, no compromise, no other option. So when you and I go through our difficulties in life, we remember, he was fixed for me. He, it settled for me. He took my sins on his body, not grudgingly, but delightfully, to restore a relationship that we could not restore. So with that thought, let's take and let's eat the bread. And as we think of the blood, his blood is enough to settle, paid in full, redeemed in full, restored in full, ransomed in full. Let's take and drink. Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we have joy. You have given us your joy that our joy would be full. And we have joy because we are redeemed. You have planted us. You have redeemed us. You're teaching us. You're building us. You're strengthening us. And it's all possible because you were fixed to go to the cross. You were fixed to pay the ransom in full. Bless the reign of our service in Christ's name. Amen. amen. If you can take your cups and please pass to the center aisle. Thank you. Good morning. That was beautiful. Okay, everyone smile. A smile. Look around, smile. Okay, now, now give a little chuckle. <laughs> okay, now the chuckle. All right. How about a hearty chuckle? Okay. Because now we're going to take the offering, and God loves a cheerful giver. All right, so Lord, we thank you. Bless this offering is for your glory. We give, we give Lord, but you, your gift is unspeakable. So we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. And all the happy givers said?
tended it with care Its buds began to blossom Their sweet fragrance filled the air But when winter came with weather The petals drooped and fell to the ground My heart sank as it faded Cause I'd forgotten who had made it Thank you. All right, let's all stand. And then after you've stood, greet one another. Hey.
Okay, uh, yeah, yes, you may be seated. <clears throat> All right, turn in, in your Bibles, please, to where I put up on the screen, please, the verses, John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 and 15. And we have a, a picture of a flower that we want to put up on the screen also. Uh, let's see how we do this. Okay, we got a flower and a bee. Yeah, so this is going to be used to illustrate what we want to say about the Trinity, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Who knows what is in the heart of God? But in Matthew eleven twenty seven, nobody knows the Father but the Son. And then nobody really knows the Son but the Father. Okay? Read these verses, John 16, 13. How about, how be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, Christ is saying. Who will glorify Christ? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will glorify Christ. When we gather here, or you gather with a brother or sister on the street, on the sidewalk, and Christ is a monk between you, the Holy Spirit glorifies Christ. Christ is honored in our speech, in our hearts, in our faith. Christ is honored. We are refreshed by being in fellowship with what is in the flower. Okay, we'll, we'll see, we'll look at that in a second. Yeah, okay, we can do it this way. What is in the flower? Can you get the nectar out of the flower? No, you can't. But the bee can. The bee can go in there and get the nectar out of the flower. And in a similar way, can you get from God what is in God? How can you get from God what is in God? It has to be brought out by the Spirit of God. That's our text in a minute, but follow it with me. Chapter 16, verse 14. He shall glorify me, Holy Spirit, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. He will show it to you. What, what do you mean, Jesus? What do you have? What do you have? He, Jesus could say, well, he did say, what I have is from the Father. The Father gave me what is his, and now it is mine. And the Spirit will show you what is mine. That's the key to your changed life. Your life changes by receiving what is in God. It's not in the world. All right, it's on the planet Earth. It's from the Holy Spirit, but it's not in the system of the world. For the world receives him not. In him is light, and the light is the light. Uh, the life of God, of Christ, is the light of men. But the world received it not, because the world is in darkness. Uh, so the world cannot receive, to use this illustration with the flower, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, to use that illustration, the world cannot get what is in the flower. It cannot get that. Does the world believe in God? Yes. Men believe in God, 96%. All the religion in the world, men believe in God. People believe in God. By the way, that's something you could say to an atheist. 
Why, aren't you a clever guy? You're an atheist when 96% of the world believes in God. And you just think you're smarter than everybody else. You must really be a smart guy. And I'm saying that sarcastically. But don't be sarcastic unless you have a relationship with them and, you know, they understand that you're, you're, you're playing around. You are serious, but at the same time, it is a reasonable, it is reasonable to challenge them and say that, well, you think Christians are narrow? Atheists are more narrow. They are telling to the rest of the world and the history of the world. The history of the human race is to believe in God, and they say there is no God. It's very narrow. Okay, go to verse 15. I'm sorry, I got off on there a little bit. It's just one of those things. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. Okay, this, follow this. All that the Father has, all that the Father has is Jesus's. Jesus says, all that the Father has is mine, and the Holy Spirit will show that to you. He will show you what is mine. What is yours, Lord? Life. Resurrection from the dead. But you might say, yeah, but, but not every, every Christian believes in the resurrection, resurrection of the dead. Did you know that? 1 Corinthians 15. The, the, the Corinthians doubted the resurrection of the dead. And the apostle said, if he's not raised from the dead, we're still in our sin. If he's not raised from the dead, then the pagans are correct. There is no resurrection. If we, he's not raised from the dead, where are our loved ones? Our loved ones have perished. If he's not raised from the dead, he gives five things, he says. If he's not raised from the dead, we are charlatans. We are preaching a false message. If he's not raised from the dead. Thomas, he's raised from the dead. Thomas says, no. I will not believe unless I put my hand in his side. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the two disciples, they did not believe. They were confused and troubled, depressed, sad. Luke chapter 24. That's for Christians. There are Christians that doubt. There are Christians that they have very surface life with a lot of troubles in life. There are Christians that have a lot of troubles in life, like, like we have. But I want, to, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I, a very simple message, but it's a powerful one. I want, I want you to put the, the flower up for one more, one more time there. I want to show you something. You and I cannot get what we really need without help. We, we cannot get it without that bee getting it for us. And that in our illustration, it's only an illustration, but it said that, that you cannot get what I have unless the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, reveals that to you. And when he reveals to you like who you are. I have four things to share. After Jesus was raised from the dead, he's not done. For 40 days, he is appearing and disappearing for 40 days. Why? Because we need help. Yeah. Yeah, we need help. Amen? Yeah, what, what was he doing? He's saying... You are the planting. I planted you, Peter. I planted you, Thomas. I planted you, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Cleopas, and the other guy. I planted you, and I care about you. I want you to, I want you to grow. 
I want you to know who I am. I want, you to, I want the Comforter to show you all, all that is mine, what I have, what I have received from my Father that is mine is revealed to you by the Spirit. Okay, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for the text. This is the... <clears throat> And I just pray that the Spirit will do that. And you, how many of you have been in Bible school? Just raise your hand. You've been in Bible school. You've been in Bible school. And how many of you, would say you're a new believer? I mean, you might call yourself some kind of a new believer. Anybody? Anybody new? There's a, you're, why aren't you raising your hand? You're ashamed of it or something. You're afraid. Oh, they're gonna, he's going to ask me a question. No. Okay, I'm a new, let's say, uh, we, we are so happy for our new believers and what it means. Because it's so exciting when something from the Holy Spirit reveals to you and shows you who you are, your identity, like who you are as a new creation is so exciting. When you, you start to read the Bible and understand the Bible, it's so exciting, like I could, that I, I, you start to understand it. Be patient, be very patient, but I want you to know you are the planting of the Lord, that you didn't do this, he planted you, he saved you, and he has, a, he has a, a way for you that is a lot better than your miserable life. <laughs> the miserable, scrubby life that you have lived. Just turn to your neighbor and just say, you have had a miserable, scrubby life, and it's over. <laughs> yeah. Your miserable life, okay? You're miserable, depressed, fearful, toxic, unforgiving, judgmental, self-righteous, Miserable, religious, non-religious, life, selfish, empty, suit, empty person. You know, the life that we have lived. How, how many understand what I'm saying? I, I can talk like that because I've had that life. Come on. I can talk like that. I know what it is. And don't fool, don't try to fool me. You got the same thing. There's a difference. There is a difference. There's a difference. Christ overcame that scrubby life. He did. And he planted us. He planted us. And we bear fruit. And our leaf does not wither. And we know when good comes, we recognize it. Yeah. Yeah, great. What a good group you are today. Okay, chapter, 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 10. No, verse 9. Okay. But as it is written, eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them. To love him. What's, in, what's another way of reading that verse? Let me, let me break it down for a moment. Your eye hasn't seen what's in the flower. Okay, let's put that the flower picture up again one more time. You're going to get tired of it. You know, Pastor Shelley, we already saw the flower, okay? We got it, we got it, okay. Wait a minute. What's in there, your eye has not seen, your ear has not heard, and it's never come from within your heart what is in there. But there's something there, and it's in God. And verse 10 says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. What has he revealed? Victory over death. What else has he revealed? Forgiveness. Deep, 
Real forgiveness, like it never happened. It never happened. Can you imagine? My sin never happened. Can you believe it? That's in God. That's not in man. In man, you always have it in the back of your mind. You always are kind of paying for it or feel gloomy or depressed because of what you did. But in God, it's not there. I remember your sin no more. That's in God, right? Correct? Okay. Verse 10 says, The Spirit reveals to us what our eye has not seen, our ear has not heard, has never come into our hearts. That means you have a natural life, what comes into your heart by nature is the way people live. That's why their life is so miserable. Because they live by what is in their hearts and in their own minds and their own appetites and their own desires. It's called sin. That's why life is miserable. It's sin. That's what's in you and me. That's what's in, that's what the way people live. And Christians also. That's how we could live. We could live like Thomas was, he was a, Thomas, he's raised from the dead. There's 10 men saying he's been raised from, we saw him a week ago. On the eighth day, Jesus comes and says, Thomas, put your hand in my side. And it seems there's no record that Thomas did that because he met him. He recognized him. He go, he, he go, I mean, it's over. He's a believer now. He believes. How did that? Jesus isn't done with you and I. He's not done with our unbelief or our fear. He's not done with our self. He's not done with you. Be patient with yourself. And by the way, you need this word to come to your heart and mind and receive things that are not in the world but are in the flower that are in the heart of God. Read the verse with me, verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. The deep things of God. There's a couple of points here I want you to see. You don't understand love. You and I, we don't, left to ourselves, we don't understand it. Forgiveness, we don't understand it. Peace, we don't know or understand it. We know the words. And then number four, it's not up there? It's coming. Yeah, it's a slow train coming. It's coming. Is it up there yet? Okay, thank you for that. you got to help me out. Okay, chapter 2. Verse 10, the deep things of God, God will reveal to us the Trinity, the nature of God, love, love. All of our, our services, we pray that the Spirit will teach us and excite us and move us in our hearts. Be patient. If you just started in your Christian life, be patient, keep going. Keep going. It'll happen little by little. It'll happen. You know sheep, many times you see sheep living in arid countries, you know, and, and uh, you wonder, where do they get the water? It's so dry, and there's so little, and it, it, it comes on like dew comes in the morning. It's in the air, and it condenses on the, on the ground, on the grass. There's dampness. That's where they get the water. How could a sheep live on the dew? How can they be hydrated by such little water? But it happens. And I feel that, uh, that the believer also be patient and you will get watered. You'll be fed. Um, the Lord will speak to your heart. You get excited about reading your Bible. You'll have new friends, sisters and brothers in Christ that you don't choose. God chooses for you. God gives you a friend. God gives you a life. God gives you fellowship. God builds you up. You have, 
He answers your prayers. He, the deep things of God must be revealed to us because that's where we want to live. We want to live understanding the mind of God, the joy of God, the peace of God. Let me give an example here. When, when Jesus met Peter after he denied him, and, and he is restored because Jesus loves Peter. And he told him that when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. And Peter he is restored. He is forgiven. People don't understand forgiveness. They, they say it's a great idea. Forgiveness, yes, that's a very good idea. But, but, but you don't understand. When I really have to forgive, it's hard. I can't do it. But otherwise, it's a great idea. Please, everybody forgive. But when it comes to me, and i got to forgive you, I can't do it. Or can I? Can I really do it the way God forgives us? Can we really love the way God loves us? It's a great idea. Love is a great idea. But when it comes to love, do we know what love is? It has to be revealed to us by the Spirit of God. Go to verse uh, 11. For what man knows the things of a man... What man knows the things of a man? We have psychology so that we can know each other. But really, is it deep enough to talk, to analyze? Do you know the hearts? Do we actually know the hearts of people? Do we know how they make decisions? Do we know about what motivates them? We don't know that much about each other. And we don't know that much about ourselves. But do you know what really knows you? Do you know what part of you, that organ, you know how we have lungs for air, stomach for food? We have an organ for knowing. What's that organ for knowing? It's the spirit of a man. That's the part of the man that knows. He knows something. And when you know God, when the Spirit of God is in your spirit, and you know Him, that's where you have your new life. You know God. You know God. Listen. When Thomas didn't believe, and then he meets Jesus, and Jesus said, you can put your hand in my side. I, I'm not, I don't know what happened. It doesn't say, but I'd like to say, I don't need to put my hand in your side. I know you. You are. I know you. And Thomas believed, and he worshiped him. He said, my Lord and my God. In the same way, when you accept Christ, you put your trust in him. You are like a tree planted by the water, and you are taken care of. You know him. The Spirit of God is in you. You have fellowship with God. You walk in the light with God. Now in a crowd this size, there's going to be people living in secret sin. There's going to be people here discouraged. There's going to be people here with bad habits that you're guilty about, that you're ashamed of. There's going to be people that are just struggling in life. This message is for you. This is the, about the God of all grace. This is about the God that loves sinners. The God that forgives us. The one that gave his son so that we could have a new life. We could be planted by the river of water and we would bear fruit. Not like a scrubby plant, but by a, 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 fruit, a tree that bears fruit by grace. Because he reveals to our spirit that he has forgiven us. Confess your sin to God. 
You don't need a mediator, a man as a mediator. We have the man Christ Jesus. There's one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Confess to him, and he is faithful and just to forgive you of all your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You must learn to live in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is where we live, in the love of God. The Spirit of God. Okay, verse 11 is, Nobody knows the things of a man save the Spirit of a man which is in Even so the things of God knows no man. Do you see that? We don't know the things of God. I mean, if you talk to an unbeliever, and you say, what do you know about God? He goes, you know, they, they say, well, he... They, you know, they have many different ideas. He's a judge. He's a kind of an old man in a cosmic rocking chair. He's senile, he's indifferent. He's upstairs somewhere. Yeah, they they have many uh, they, that he's a policeman. Um, I remember uh, that that uh, when the little boy said he's the one that. He is angry with you if you're having a good time. That was his definition of God. He's angry. If you are having a good time, he's angry about it. There are many ideas that people... You can't know the things of God without the Spirit of God. But because we have the Spirit of God, we live with freedom. We have freedom. Real freedom, spiritual freedom. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And you'll become like the, the government doesn't control your joy or your, your freedom or your lifestyle. It has an effect, but it's not deep enough. The society isn't deep dictating to me the quality of my life. The society is not telling me I need money. Sometimes I meet people, they say, well, we can't do that because we don't have the money. I go, well, like, I've never lived like that, never making decisions based on money. I just don't do those things because I don't have money. <laughs> but I do things without money. I go for a walk. I enjoy nature. I go swimming. I... I, I live a great life, a full life. It has nothing to do with money. Has money determined your life and the quality of your life? Or is it your spirit? Is it your words? Is it your education? What if I give all my heart and my mind to this book? What kind of life will I live? I will be planted by the rivers of water and bear fruit. And it has nothing there about money or which country you live in, or which century you were born into, or what your family class is, has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that God has planted you, and that you are by a river where it is nourishing you, and you uh, don't see the heat when it comes. You are blessed by God. Okay? Go to verse... Uh, uh, 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. You can't do that because you don't have any money. I, you can watch me do it. I don't need the money. Well, you can't do it that way. I can't do it that way, but I can do it this way. Right? Amen. You've not received the spirit of the world. They will tell you what you can do and cannot do. The spirit of the world will tell you what, is, uh, what you can do and what you cannot do. And, and God is saying, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Follow me. You will become like me. Like Jesus walked on the water and then you, you can't do that. And he goes, well, when you know the deep things of God, your life will take on a dimension that sets you free, and that you will believe God for things, and you'll have a new life. And it's not a miserable, scrubby one. It's a fruitful one. It's a joyful one. You have some authority going on in your heart, 
And Jesus let, left us here because he's saying, you are the evidence of my resurrection. When people meet you and get to know you and the way you are and how you talk and how you love and how you forgive. By the way, in John 20, he said peace three times when he met the disciples. He just said, peace be unto you. Again, in the same text, peace be unto you. And then again, peace be unto you. That's peace that the world cannot give. Peace when it's COVID. I was shocked in our country. I had such a high, high idea about us as Americans. And then when the COVID hit, I just saw so many people afraid to die. Yeah, like all of us naturally, of course, that's understandable. But I say, why are we cowering? Why are we afraid of death? Why are we afraid of disorganization? Why are we afraid of a pandemic? And I don't want to sound arrogant or uppity about it. I just want to say I was kind of surprised that people would be like, like so much like worried about, about things and and I, I think there is something sensible about that. And on the other hand, when it's deep in you, Amen. when you live and fear controls your life, that's not living. Amen. When fear controls your life or guilt controls your life or worry controls your life, that's not living. Christ came to make us alive and give us life. And that would be deep in our spirit and in our hearts. Why, why do we say this? Because in the book of Acts, you see what happened when the Spirit came with this strength. Pentecost came in Acts chapter 2, and the Spirit moved. And then you see it in chapter 3, and you see it in chapter 4 and 5. You just see it again and again, and you see these men that should be afraid and cowering and worried and troubled about their future and about the government of the age, the time, by the way, you had the government of the age, a real system, very solid, strong, Roman government, very powerful, Jewish Sanhedrin, very capable, very smart people that are in control and they've got the, they've got the, they got it all. They got the military, they got the economy, they got the buildings, they got it all, everything. And it's like you are nobody. You go against them. But guess what? When you get what's in the flower, when you, God shows you something that's not from this world, when God whispers to your heart, when God ministers in your life, then pornography will fall away if you want it to. That's up to you. But it will fall away. It won't have the authority or the power because Christ is bigger than pornography. Christ is bigger than life. Now you might say, yeah, but pastor, you don't know. I'm saturated in that lifestyle. I'm saturated with it. That's my habit. That's how I live. I'm saturated. I go to church once a week. How am I ever going to change? How is that going to happen? And I'm, I'm telling you that when Christ speaks to your heart and you follow him and you trust him, the Holy Spirit, what's in that flower, the Holy Spirit reveals to you and you start to say, wow, I'm free. I am free. I can say no to that. I am free. I can say no to that. I've got authority. I got, that's not in my life. That's over. That's done. I'm finished with that. And then let's say you lapse back into it again and so on. And you live in some unbelief like Thomas or you struggle like Peter. But Jesus is there with you. Christ is for you, not against you. Christ came to say, help us, plant us, nourish us, feed us, build us up, help us, God. You, you are not, you, you got work to do, Lord. And he goes, you can absolutely, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not stop. What I started, I will finish. Come on, walk with me. Trust me. Christ is saying to us. Be patient. Have a church in your life. You need a church. Have a Bible. Get Mama's Bible. Put your name in there. 
Mama, this is Mama's Bible, and you put your name under the Mom's Bible. Now it's my Bible, because she isn't here anymore. And I got Mama's Bible, and I, I start to read it, and I, and, uh, and I start to learn it. And I have a pastor teacher, and I have a life of faith, and I have a congregation, and I listen to messages, and I live by faith. It's a lot better. You might say, well, I'm not a religious person. I'm not either. But it's a lot better to get what's in that flower than to get what's out in the world. It's a lot better for God's Spirit to tell you who you are than for the world to tell you who you are. Don't listen to what the world has to say about you, but it's a lot better for God to say who you are and live like that. That's the way to go. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Turn to each other and just say, what do you say about the flower? I missed it. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and just say, what was that all about? I missed that whole thing. I didn't get it. Let's have a prayer. You're here today and you haven't accepted Christ. You haven't gotten to that place where you said, I need you, Jesus. You came into the world for me. Save me. Forgive me. Come into my heart today. If you haven't done that yet, do it, do it now. Walk by faith in him. And turn from your own ways. Turn from it. And put your trust in him. That's how I stopped smoking marijuana. Many years ago, 50 years ago, I stopped by the grace of God. I did it. Not, not me. But Jesus did it. Thank you, Jesus. And you live a better life, a better life, a lot better life with Jesus in your heart. Amen. And turn from your ways and bring it to God. Walk by faith in him. If you keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, be patient. God is for you. God is not against you. But God is a holy God. We are sinful people and we need Jesus in our life. And say to Jesus, come, to, come into my heart in Jesus' name. And he will right now, immediately. He's for you. Right now, immediately he comes into your heart. And walk with him. He's with you. Yes, amen. amen. The, could, yeah, thank you. All right, so in a minute or two, they're moving the chairs. We'll have a baptism right here for, I think we have seven folks that are going to be baptized. So that's what's happening. You need a microphone. Please look at the microphone. Okay. We had need one for the announcement. Right over there. 
ってことですかね。Good afternoon, everybody. We'll get our baptism started in just one second.、Uh, I'll kick it over to Pastor Steve just to say a couple words. Oh, okay. So,、uh, this is amazing. We're baptizing、uh, people today. It's like they've made decisions for Jesus.、Uh, the first two are、uh, from our ministry in Dundalk, which goes back a ways with、uh, Pastor John Perkins and Pastor Jeff McKeon. And I've been caring for this group of people for the last few years. Uh, they're from Pam,、uh, Pam Greaves, uh, uh, was at the Greens down in Dundalk. And so we have two people, Adele and Sissy. And、uh, this is a great fruit. Thank you for your prayers. And、uh, we're going to uh, just uh, thank God. This is like a great thing to、uh, testify to what God has done, what God has planted in us. Right? Right? It's all right. It's me. So, all right. So, who's first? First up, we have Miss Edna McGee. Yep. Ms. Edna. This is Sissy that's coming. I want you to tell you, know, Sissy loves her Bible. We teach through books of the Bible on Tuesday night at the Greens at Dundalk, six o'clock, if you want to be there, 35, 3455, right where the bridge used to be,、uh, right down there at the end of Dundalk.、Uh, and Sissy, like, reads ahead. She knows that we're studying Luke 9 on Tuesday, so Sissy has already read Luke 9, right? Come on down. Do I say anything? I'm just Thank you, Father, for saving me. Okay. All right. Hold on to my, on to my,、oh, my hand here. This way. This way. All right. <laughs> here we go. This is the dance right now. The <laughs> baptism can be a dance. It's amazing. All right. Uh, Sissy, Edna,、uh, we just、uh, baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you.、Mm-hmm. Next up, a good friend of Miss Edna, we have Miss Adele Sampson. So, this is also Adele is from、uh, the Dundalk group. God bless you. That's right. You want to say anything? I'm just glad to be here today. Amen. I'm shaking. I'm shaking? Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't mean to be shaking.、Uh, but、uh, did you like the message today? Oh, yes. Okay, very good. Are, you feel planted in the body of Christ? Yes. Okay, very good. All right. I'm very nervous. All right.、Uh, Adele, we baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I got you. I got you. All right. Our next baptizee、um, comes all the way from Virginia. He's been coming here for a few months, Mr. Joshua Etherton. This is Joshua. Would you like to share this? Yeah,、anything? just really briefly,、um, I'm really happy to be here.、Um, I'm choosing to get baptized because Jesus has repeatedly saved me, shown me he's with me,、um, and given me the opportunity to、uh, continue to spread his good news、um, and bring him to other people. I actually、uh, am moving to Hawaii、um, in a couple of weeks.、Wow. So I'm going to be able to bring Jesus to people in Hawaii. Praise the Lord. Did you want to take your glasses off? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Joshua, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you thought that coming from Virginia was far, the next baptizee we have has come from a lot farther. So we have somebody here, um, all the way from Belgium, Mr. Loban Lovin. Okay. Okay, Lubin, would you like to say anything about your faith in Christ? Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Lovin. I'm from Belgium, but I'm in the Great Grace Church in Paris. So um, I came here to get baptized. So I'm in vacation, and I had the opportunity to come here, and I'm very happy. And uh, I just want to, to thank God because he, he showed me his love. He showed me how he's powerful uh, in my life, in the life of my brother and my sister. And I came here with my sister, she's there. And uh, yeah, I just, want, <laughs> um, I just want to show um, to the world that I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow God. And yeah, that's all. Thank you. Okay, Leuven, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please welcome uh, one of our sisters, Zabata Hill. Hi, Zabata. Would you like to say anything about your faith in Christ? I just want to say that God is good all the time. All the Amen. time, God is good. Faith Amen. as small as a mustard seed can go a long way. Yes. There you go. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Father, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Our next baptizee comes from a very far place as well. He comes all the way from Kenya. Please welcome Henry Muhidu. Henry, do you have a word for us, word of testimony? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Um, I've been waiting for this for 20 years, um, and then decided to, make, to put my seal today uh, on my faith. What took you so long? I kept postponing it. Don't postpone it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Henry, it's a joy to baptize you, finally, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, brother. Moving right along, please welcome Kerna Delarm. It is warm. It is warm. <laughs> Would you like to say anything about your faith in Christ? Um, honestly, if I'm going to say anything, it's that um, God can heal you no matter what. Amen. And I've experienced that like multiple times by now. So trust me when I say he can and will heal you. You just need to have faith and believe that he will. All right. Okay, Kerna? Yep. Okay, Kerna. All right. So we're going to pray that Kerna comes out of her shell a little bit, okay? <laughs> uh, Kerna, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of, of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Woo! <laughs> uh, 
please welcome a wonderful young brother of ours, Mr. Elijah Sandy Peppers. Great Elijah. <laughs> I just want to say that just like the message today, I feel like God has planted me in this church and I'm very grateful for that. Um, praise God. Elijah, baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And for our final baptizee of the morning, please welcome Miss Julianne Johnson. Hi, Sammy. Hello. Hi, <laughs> Trust me, I love the Lord. Okay. Okay, Julianne, you believe in Jesus as your Savior? I do. And you wanted to be baptized like Jesus said. Yes. So we're going to do that right now. Wait. How are you feeling about that? Good. Okay, you ready? Yes. You're going to go all the way under the water. Yes. And then you're coming back up. Yes. Okay, I promise. Okay. Julianne, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You ready? Yes. Here we go. Amen. Bye. Bye. Amen. 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 Okay, that concludes our baptismal service. Okay, wasn't that amazing? It's awesome to be in the body of Christ. All right, let's just pray. Father, thank you so much for each life and what you're doing in each life, Lord. God, we just pray that the message we heard today, we would continually just meditate what you are showing to us, Lord. Thank you so much. Cover our afternoon. Pray for the 6.30 service tonight. Bring us back again to hear more so we can grow and grow and grow. Love you. Thank you. In Christ's name, amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>